Yes, good morning family and welcome to another Sunday, a blessed, a saturated Sunday, saturated with the grace and the mercy and the love and the goodness of God. Yes, I am here once again to encourage you because I really received a lot of response from family who watched us and um, a lot of them were encouraged by the message and that has also inspired me to start up a series with you i'm going to be starting up a series called unchangeable events because i know i remember one somebody asked me a question about unchangeable events so i'll be having a three-part series every sunday by the special grace of god to explain what we mean by unchangeable events most times unchangeable events are situations that we cannot control you know it is not in a, no matter what we do no matter the prayer we offer it is as it should be by divine will i'm going to be telling you part one of this series and that part one is titled embracing the promise and the sacrifice so if you have your pen there i believe you should start noting this teaching because these are divine teachings these are teachings you cannot find anywhere nobody can tell you they have this teaching. These are divine teachings from our Father in the Lord, Prophet TV Joshua. And these are teachings that have inspired me to be who God wants me to be. So by the special grace of God, if you are privileged to be here, please see it as a great blessing for your spiritual life. So I'm going to be talking about unchangeable events. And part one of this unchangeable event is starting this week. So call your family, send a message, call people to connect with us online and please remember to sow a seed connect with us and sow a seed to to further our streaming facilities as you join us the lord will bless you in jesus name yes part one of this series is titled embracing the promise and the sacrifice hmm. this message is outstanding let's look at that book of hebrews 11 verse 17 very quickly because of time it says, by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Listen again, Hebrews 11 verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. You know, there are many situations in our lives. If we look at things that are happening in, in our various nations today, what we are encountering in our socio-economic, you know, life in each country, we are facing a lot. But you know, when this, the Bible said, by faith, Abraham, many things that happen to us by faith, people think that we are not normal as Christians. They think maybe you are... There's somebody invisible telling you what to do. Sometimes you want to go out and everybody wants to go out with you. And you say, no, I don't feel like going out. People say, this person is not normal. When everybody is doing this, he wants to do this. When everybody is going white, he wants to go black. When everybody is going blue, he wants to go green. By faith, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. When you are a man of faith, you are not normal. You just have to know that. Because he who had embraced the promise, this is the same Abraham that God had given Isaac, who waited for years to have Isaac. God tested him to sacrifice. We are talking about embracing our promises from God and our time of sacrifice. Because life, there are two stages in life. A time to cry, a time to laugh, a time... So, everything in our life has stages. Everything in your life, in my life, has stages. And each stage will be unveiled according to God's purpose and plan for our lives. I said last week, there will be unchangeable events in our lives that our prayers and fasting cannot change because it is as it should be by divine will. Do you think that if Abraham could have prayed his way out of that situation, he wouldn't have done it? 
I'm sure he would have cried to God. He would have prayed to God. This was the same Abraham that God will appear to and speak with. But at that time, I believe after that instruction, he might not have been able to access God because he was in a time of testing. Your testing qualifies you for a promotion. Your promotion qualifies you for a reward. And your reward increases the flow of your joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Abraham faced an unchangeable event when he was told to go and sacrifice Isaac. Now, listen to this. Trusting in God is not mere intellectual acknowledgement. Many of you that claim you trust God. It's not just, I trust God. I trust God. No. Oh. There will be times of testing where your fasting and prayer cannot change. If you gather the whole prayer warriors in this world and put them on a, an exercise of prayer, it will not change the heart of God concerning that situation. Trusting in God is not mere intellectual acknowledgement. Listen to this. But it is adherence to trust in faith in, commitment to, and total dependence upon God for everything. I repeat again, trusting in God is not just a mere intellectual acknowledgement, but adherence to trust in God, faith in God, commitment to God, and total dependence upon him for everything. You know, the scriptures are God's promises. So if anyone, if you and I continue to trust in them and we rely upon them, God will fulfill them. Yes. Now, God will fulfill them, but it, it depends on how God chooses to fulfill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, the Bible are God's promises for our life. If you and I trust in them, because I'm also included, I'm a Christian. I'm also talking to myself. If we trust them completely and implicitly, God will fulfill them. But there is a clause here. The way God chooses to fulfill them is where we are going. Remember, we are talking about unchangeable events, three-part series. We have started part one. For those of you who are just connecting now, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. We are talking about embracing the promise of God. And the sacrifice. So it is not just about embracing the promise. Joseph had a promise. Joseph was promised. He had a dream, a perfect picture of his future. He saw himself on a throne. He saw his brothers bowing down before him. But he embraced the sacrifice of slavery. He embraced the sacrifice of kidnapping. He embraced the sacrifice of a pit. He embraced the sacrifice of Potiphar's wife's temptation. He embraced the sacrifice of slavery, of prison condition. Because every situation was meant to teach him mind management. Hey, yeah. Every situation in your life that your fasting and your prayer has not changed. What are you going through? Are you sick? Are you facing financial challenges? Are you facing setback? Hmm. Listen to this, my brother or my sister. That situation you are facing, just like Joseph, just as you have the promises of God, that situation is to teach you mind management. That situation is to teach you material management. That situation is to teach you human management. I'm still going to be talking about this series, mind, material, and human management in your situation. What will it teach you? But today we are talking about embracing the promise and the sacrifice. So now let's go back to Abraham. 
Abraham faced this unchangeable event. He was blessed with a lot of cattle. He was blessed with a lot of soldiers, slavery, slaves and everything. He could have taught many of them to pray our prayers and say, start praying to my God. I cannot sacrifice my only son. My, the only promise of God for my life at my old age. No. He obeyed. He trusted implicitly and completely. Because trusting in God for Abraham is not mere intellectual acknowledgement. It's not, oh God, I trust you. God had to keep himself away from Abraham in order for him to totally obey. Until the last hour, God showed himself strong by replacing his son, by replacing Isaac with a sacrifice. With a real sacrifice. So what, is, what situation are you in your life right now? Like I said, if you trust in God's word completely and implicitly, the scriptures are his promises. He will fulfill them. But now, the way God chooses and how he goes about fulfill them, fulfilling them is God's business, not yours. Because you cannot begin to tell God how to fulfill his promise in your life. Now, what are we talking about here? In order for you to be content, to be happy with the way God chooses or the method God uses to fulfill his promise for your life, you need to be content. Hey, thank you, Jesus. You need contentment. The most important thing to be fulfilled and contented is to give God his proper position in your heart. That is the only way you can be happy what, with whatever decision God's, God makes in fulfilling his promise and his blessing to your life. You need to put God in his proper position in your heart. Contentment can only come when we walk in the spirit. It is so exciting to walk in the spirit. I'm telling you, family, I am a living testimony. When you walk in the spirit, you hear God, God's instruction clearly. There is no confusion in your spirit. So when you give God his proper position and place in your heart, which means giving God his proper position and place means you see every other thing you have in reference to him. You do not compare anything else to God. He is incomparable. Your wife, your husband, your children, your cars, your houses, everything will be in reference to God. He comes first. Remember the song that says, More love, more power, more of you in my life. I will worship you with all of my heart. I will worship you with all of my soul. I will worship you with all of my strength. You are my God. You are my God. Yes, everything you have will be in reference to God. You don't place him with all other concerns. That is the only way. Now you have the answer. Many of you ask, how can I put God in his proper position in my heart? Everything else is in reference to him. That is why he becomes the chief husband man when you lose your spouse. He is the chief husband man. When you, are, when you are lost, he is the road map. When you are thirsty, he is the water of life. When you are hungry, he is the bread of life. He is the way, the truth, the reality. Now, how can we be content? Contentment can only come when we walk in the spirit. 
when you walk in the spirit, Apostle Paul advises, you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature, as the book of Galatians 5 verse 16 says. So that is why walking in the spirit is so exciting. You hear the Holy Spirit's instruction clearly and without confusion. If you walk in the spirit, you become a regenerated soul. A Christian who walks in the spirit becomes a regenerated soul with renewed mind, renewed affections, renewed desires, and a renewed will. I hope I'm making sense. Please take note of these classes because very soon we are going to be having a live one and I'll be asking you questions. So take this message and review it every day. Go back to the live and play it again and again. Turn it over and over and over in your heart. Amen. Now, Apostle Paul advises in Galatians 5 verse 16 that the key is not to worry about our situation. The key is not to worry that, oh, I've prayed, I've prayed, this sickness is still there. I've prayed, I've prayed, there's no solution. I've gone to this pastor, I've gone to that pastor. I, I watch this on TV, I watch this on YouTube, I watch this on Instagram, I watch this pastor. This is what the Christians are facing today. Everybody is confused in their spirit. They will say there's a solution, but you need to know that there are some unchangeable events in your life. That pray, prayer, your prayer and fasting cannot change. You just have to submit to the will of God. And then allow him to choose how he will implement that will in your situation. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, your soul, your spirit. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That is why I tell people, we may not be able to control our circumstances. Whatever you are facing now, you may not be able to control it, but you can control your attitude. Because for every Christian, defeat is not final. God is still saying something. It is not fatal. Whatever situation you are in, admit that you have to submit to the will of God. After submission, wait and let God implement his will. Let him implement the way he chooses to set you out or take you out of that problem. Now, what will you do with Jesus in the face of life's uncertainties? Because many of you... When you face situations, you some of you say, I want to commit suicide. Remember, you did not give yourself your life. You do not own your life. What will you do in the face of life's uncertainties? When you move around and people say, look at that woman, she's barren. She doesn't have a child. Mm. What will you do? I just want to advise you that as a Christian, what will you do when you move around and they say, oh, you have been to church and God is not healing. Okay, go and do this or go to that. Or you have taken so many medication and your sickness is still there. It's crippling you day by day. Please, let me advise you, family, that whether the world laughs or frowns at you, that is not what is important. Remember, it is an enemy. The world cannot give you solution. The world can only give you temporary pleasure rather than permanent gain. So what would you choose to do? If the world is laughing at you, it is not their laughter or their, their compassion that matters. If they mock you, that is not what counts, family. Hmm. Let them mock you. They are not mocking you, they are mocking your God and your God will come out stronger. Just submit to his will. Submit to his will. Many times we, we claim we submit to God's will, but we still put our desires, our affections, our emotions before God. You have to submit to his will. To submit to his will is to put him in his proper position and allow whatever way he chooses to implement it to happen. What will you do? 
Or what are you doing? Because the world is laughing or frowning at you. Hmm. Let them laugh. Let them frown. Because whether the world laughs or shows you compassion, it is just for a moment. Whether they laugh or show you care, it is just for a moment. Remember always that the world is an enemy. Just like Daniel. Whether you sit on the throne or you end up in the belly of a ferocious lion, you will still need God. We need God because this world is not our home. We need God so that we, he rescues us lest we dash our foot against the stone. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blues. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And my treasures are laid up, your treasures, somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon you from heaven's open door. So you can't feel at home in this world anymore. This happened to the rich man who came to Jesus and said, Lord, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, Go and sell all your possessions and follow me. Give it to the poor and come and follow me. Hmm. That was a big instruction. Embracing the promise and the sacrifice. Many of us, we are like this rich man. We want to embrace the promise of God, but we are not ready to sacrifice. So whether you sit on the throne whether you are healed of your sickness or your situation changes or you find yourself in the belly of a ferocious lion or generational setback or disappointment and failure or crippled with sickness, you will still need God. You will still need God because in our passage through this wicked world to our permanent home, we need God. So that we do not dash our foot against the stone. You see, one thing is you must see the choice to serve the Lord as a necessity, not as an option. When you see the need to serve God as a necessity, you will have no value. There will be no value in any other choice than to serve the Lord. The reason why Abraham received that contented life was because he made the wisest choice to obey God, whether with his blessing or even if it was taken away. He made the decision to obey God, whether with Isaac or without Isaac. <laughs> he made a decision, just like you, to obey God, whether with his cattle or without his cattle. Now, put this in your situation, put yourself in Abraham's pos position and say, I made a decision, I made a choice to serve God, whether with my Lamborghini or without my Lamborghini. <laughs> I made a decision. I have made the decision. Let's put it like this. I choose to make that decision to serve the Lord, whether with my possessions or without my possessions. I have made that decision to serve the Lord and to obey, whether with my beauty or without my beauty. I have made the decision to serve God, whether with my good health or without my good health. I have made the decision to serve God, whether I walk or I crawl. <laughs> Begin to claim that right now. When you choose when you make the choice to serve the Lord as your necessity, you will not be reasoned out of your belief in Jesus. Hey, yeah. When you make the choice to serve the Lord a necessity, you cannot be reasoned out of your belief in Jesus. 
When you make the choice to serve the Lord as a necessity, nobody can reason you out of what, of the truth that you know in Christ Jesus. Many of us now, <laughs> you see, a person who has a contented life, let me put it like this, a person who has a contented life will always be happy even where there seems to be nothing where there's nothing to be happier about, he will still be happy because his life's purpose sees beyond the pain and the joy of life he receives. The purpose of his life sees beyond the pain and the joy of life he receives. You need to know the purpose of your life. A contented life is one that is based solely and completely on Jesus Christ, the head of the unseen community. Remember, we are in the seen world now. We are in a, a world where we see each other, but we are going to an unseen community where we will live forever. So we have to trust him completely, solely and wholly and make sure our lives depend upon him. That is why the choice to serve the Lord for those who have resolved in sincerity to make God their keeper have chosen the best path to secure themselves. The choice to serve the Lord as a necessity, not as an option, when you have made that choice to serve the Lord, you have com contentment. And co your contentment will be, based, will be based beyond the pressure, the pleasure or the pain of life you have. You will be content. You will be happy, even though there is nothing to be happier about on the outside. But you will have internal joy. Nobody can give internal joy. So, when you make the choice to serve God as a necessity, you will not sit on the fence when your belief in Jesus conflicts with your social, your moral, your cultural, or your economic situation or status. You will not choose to be indifferent when they say, oh, what do you say about this thing as a Christian? Oh, <laughs> you ramble. No. You will trust wholly and completely in the word of God and you will stand by it. You will not choose to sit on the friends in some situations where your belief conflicts, where your social status, your position, your, 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 your wealth, your social relations, let me put it like that, conflicts with your belief in Christ Jesus. You will not sit on the fence. You will not even, you will rather choose to stand to obey God, not disobey God. So this means you are, if you now choose to, if you find yourself now, examine yourself in your daily activities, your daily speech. Maybe sometimes you have, your belief in Christ Jesus continues to conflict with your social, moral status, social status, you know. And you find yourself choosing to sit on the friends or being indifferent. Then, my brother, my sister, it means you are merely convinced about Jesus. You are not yet converted. You are not yet converted. You are just merely convinced about Jesus. You must choose to obey if you are converted. Holy and implicitly obey the word of God. You see, obeying God at first may seem hard until you come to see that all he asks is for your good and it will make your life full and free. Obeying God at first may seem hard until you come to realize that all he's asking is for your good and it will make your life full and free. Trust and obey. 
for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey family we are going to pray now the prayer for this week the book of john 6 verse 63 jesus said the word i have spoken to you are spirit and life what does this mean god's word speaks about his promises and his spirit executes them the word you have received now i know that it will change you if you turn it over and over and over in your heart it will change you and you will see life the way God sees it you will see yourself the way God sees you you will know God's opinion about yourself and others so begin to turn this word over and over as we pray my prayer is that you have a hearing heart a hearing heart will never be a grudges because you don't have time to put the word of God you don't have time to place anything any other concern above God in your heart. Any other concern above God and his word in your heart. You have no time. The harvest is plenty. Laborers are few. You have no time. A hearing heart that hears from God will have no time to bear grudges. <laughs> A hearing heart that hears from God will have no time for malice, for evil suspicion. A hearing heart that hears from God will not be confused in their spirit. I pray you have a hearing heart. Right now, begin to receive that hearing heart in the name of Jesus. Begin to receive that hearing heart in the name of Jesus. Everything that takes away the word of God in your heart, begin to receive a hearing heart in the name of Jesus. Whatever, right now, whatever, 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 strange thing, strange noise, that comes into your heart i will call it strange noise that will take away the hearing heart of god begin to receive that hearing heart in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus, name of jesus. a hearing heart takes god's word takes everything god says and does in good faith and puts a better construction to it the more sensibly the hearing heart feels his situation, the better improved is the fruit of his prayer life. I say receive a hearing heart in the name of Jesus. Receive a hearing heart in the name of Jesus. Receive a hearing heart. Like I said again, a hearing heart that hears from God, that places God above all other concerns. Whatever God says and does, he takes it in good faith and he puts a better construction to it. The more sensibly he senses or he feels his situation, the better improved is the fruit of his prayer life. Receive a hearing heart in the name of Jesus. Receive a hearing heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever strange pain, we are going to pray for healing. Whatever strange pain, hmm, Whatever strange pain in your system, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Let divine health begin to be your portion. Divine health begin to be your portion. Divine health begin to be your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whatever is holding you down to where you do not belong, be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. 
I say whatever is holding you down to where you do not belong, be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, they are empty. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your strength. Father Lord, they are empty vessels. Fill them with your power. Fill them with your humility. Whatever that is sitting in your vessel that does not glorify God, be drained out in the name of Jesus. Be drained out in the name of Jesus. Be drained out in the name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. I say whatever is sitting in your vessel hmm, that will not glorify you, God tomorrow in your life, that will not glorify God in your family, that will not glorify God with your friends, that will not glorify God in your society, whatever is sitting in your vessel, be drained out in the name of Jesus. Be drained out in the name of Jesus. And you that your vessel is empty, Father, fill them with your strength. Fill them with your power. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your humility. Fill them with your sincerity. Fill them with your holiness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Begin to say amen now because I know that God has started planting the seed of what you are becoming. God has started planting the seed of what you are becoming. Begin to stand up now and begin to give glory to God. Begin to dance. Begin to rejoice. Begin to sing. Begin to... <clears throat> what the Lord has done for you, you cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for you, you cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for you, you cannot tell it all. He saved you and washed you in his blood. So you will shout hallelujah. You will shout hallelujah. You will shout praise the Lord. So you will shout hallelujah. You will shout hallelujah. You will shout praise the Lord. Viewers, family, because you are family, this message I have shared with you is not the message you will find on the street. Take my word for it. Nobody will tell you that you have unchangeable events. That your Everybody will tell you there's always a solution. Yes! But even in your solution is an unchangeable event that you have to submit to the will of God. And when you are content, when you place God, give him his proper position, you will know his will. You will know how he wants to go about implementing a solution in that your situation. But one thing is certain. Whether the world frowns at you, mocks you about your God, mocks your situation. Remember, they are an enemy. The world is an enemy and they will only give you temporary care, temporary pleasure, not permanent gain. So who would you choose in the face of life's uncertainties? I'm summarizing everything I've taught you now. Choose to obey God completely, wholly and implicitly. I said this week, you will take the name of Jesus into your week in the name of Jesus. Take the name of Jesus. To take the name of Jesus into our week is to take the living word of God. Because Christ and his word are one. Hey, Christ and his word are one. I say may you take the name of Jesus into your week. Take the word of Jesus into your week. Take the name of Jesus into your week. Take the word of Jesus into your week. Take the name of Jesus into your week. Take the word of Jesus into your week. Remember, when you wake up in the morning, tomorrow, you are going out. Place your hand on your children. Place your hand on your husband. Don't place your hand on your husband's head. Place it on his chest. But your husband can place his hand on your head. You wife. So place your, husband, your hand on your husband's chest and pray the blessings of God upon him. Tell him, take the name of Jesus into your week. Hey, take the word of Jesus into your week. 
and you will see that difference in each other's life. Pray for your children. Pray for your grandparents. Pray for your mom and dad. And tell them, take the name of Jesus everywhere you go. That is signed, sealed, and delivered. That is a testimony to the promise of God that is coming into your life. Family, thank you so much. I know you are blessed by this message. Please take this message serious. I want you to start sending me how these messages have started changing your life. I want to hear your testimony. You know, I'm not just here to do prayer alone. I want you to take this message, receive this teaching as if your life depends on it. Because whatever you need from Jesus, healing, deliverance will come through his word. That is what I tell people. So I'm not just, if it's not that God will not give me the grace to do interactive, I can choose to do it every day. But that is not the most important thing. The most important thing is the message of the good news of Jesus. That is the only thing that can transform you. That is the only thing that can change you. So we are not talking about merely receiving the, the, the prayer. How will you maintain it if you don't have the word of God? When you run around for miracle, miracle, how will you maintain whatever you have received if you, the word of God does not sit in you? If you are not filled with the word. Nothing in this life is stable except the word of God. So God bless you as you go into your new week. I love you and I hope you are inspired. I hope you were blessed by this message. I pray we'll meet again in faith. Till I see you next week again, unless the Holy Spirit leads me to another, you know, spontaneous program. But this message is for you for this week that we, are caught, we have started. Go into it with God's divine word and your life will never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you with the love of blood. God bless you. Amen.